ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय नारायण नमस्कृत नरम शैव नरोत्तम देवी सरस्वती व्यास तथो जय मुदीर नष्ट प्रायशु भद्रेशु नित्यम भागवत सेवया भगवते उत्तम श्लोके भक्तिर्भवति नैष्ठी कृष्णा वासुदेवाय देवकी नंदनाय च नंद गोपकुमराय गोविंदय नमो नम ओम ज्ञान ज्ञानाजनछलाकया चक्षुरोन्मील तस्म श्रीगुर नम श्रीचैतन्य मनोभीष्ट स्थापित ये नूतले स्वयं रूप कदा मह्यम ददा स्वपदाक वंदेह श्रीगुरो श्रीयुतापदकमल श्रीगुरून वैष्णवाश्रीप सागर जात सगणा रघुनाथ तम सजीव साइत सवधूत पर्जना सहित कृष्ण चैतन्य देव श्रीराधाकृष्णपादलिता श्री विशाखान्विता हे कृष्णकुणा सिंधु दीनबंधु जगत्पते गोपेश गोपिका कांत राधा कांत नमोस्तुते तप्त कांचन गौरांगी राधे वृंदावनेश्वरी वृषभानुसुते देवी प्रणमा हरिप्रि पंचकुभ्य कृपा सिंधुभ्य पतीता पावनेभ्यो वैष्णवेभ्यो नमो नम जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्री अद्वैत गाधर श्रीवासादी गौरभक्त वृंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे ओम विष्णुपादाय कृष्ण कृष्णाय उत्तम श्री सर्वनाथ स्वामी नाम नम विष्णुपादाय कृष्ण प्रेष्ठाय उत्तले श्रीमती भक्ति वेदांत स्वामी नाम नमस्ते सरस्वती देवी गौरवाणी प्रचारिणी निर्विशेष श्री गुरु दीन तरण परमानंद माधव श्री चैतन्य हरे कृष्ण सो अ वेरी हैप्पी गुरु पूर्णिमा टू एवरी वन गुरु पूर्णिमा इज द अपीरेंस डे यू कैन से फॉर व्यासदेव इज द कंपाइलर ऑफ वेदिक स्क्रिप्चर्स Uh, is sometimes also known as Vyasa Purnima, and uh, uh, Vyasa is like a representative of all the gurus in the disciplic system because he was the compiler of the Vedic scriptures. He is the one who is written down for the benefit of all of us and all future generations. All the scriptures. Uh, both compiled as well as written uh, and taught to various uh, of his uh, students uh, so that they are preserved and uh, maintained in uh, kali yuga of course uh, unfortunately not all of them are remain preserved until now uh, but at least the two most important works of course many works are preserved but many works aren't as well but uh, the most important the gita and the bhagavat are very much uh, available and these are the most important ones uh, along with of course there are some upanishads and like kali santa tarun upanishad and a few others which are also been uh, preserved because of active study so today is the day to express our gratitude to the entire guru parampara uh to our spiritual masters our diksha gurus our shiksha gurus our vartma pradarshak gurus all the teachers from whom we have learned uh we have received knowledge of course when we use the word guru it can refer to a spiritual teacher it can refer to a material teacher and we are grateful to all but amongst all teachers those who are removers of the ignorance om agyana timirandasya nyanaanjana chalakaya those who are 
anointing, helping anoint our eyes with the salve of knowledge, which gives us the divya drishti. Chakshudan dilo jai, janme janme prabhu se. Divya gyan ride prakashito. Those who are giving us that knowledge. Uh, of course, for all of us, the most uh, preeminent uh, Shiksha Guru uh, or Param Guru is uh, Srila Prabhupada, who is the founder Acharya of the International Society for Krishna Consciousness, uh, because he's the one who has made this knowledge accessible to the modern man in a language that the modern man understands. Uh, Sorry for the delay. Uh, for today's session, I was in a special uh, conference on uh, manuscriptology and paleology organized by the Bhaktivedanta Research Center. And uh, there in that conference, we were just discussing and hearing some of the experts speak about how important it is to protect our manuscripts and preserve them for the future generations. So while at one level, yes, of course, preservation and protection is important and necessary. But the true purpose of preservation is not just about having a book reference in a library, but so that that knowledge is learned by the masses, that wisdom is learned, practiced, and the true benefit of that knowledge is derived by the masses. So much wisdom is there in our scripture. So Prabhupada made that wisdom, the wisdom of the Gita, the wisdom of the Bhagavad, the wisdom of Chaitanya Charitamrut, available to practically 6 billion, 7 billion people on the planet in English. In fact, Prabhupada has not only written the books in English, but uh, his disciples and others, friends and well wishers have translated the books into many, 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 many other languages. Uh, I do not know the count of the languages because the language, the count is also continuously changing, but just so that you know, the Bhagavad Gita itself is available in, I don't know, the last I heard was something like 70, 80 languages at least. Maybe it's more than that. It's available in Chinese, it's available in Arabic, it's available in Russian. Practically the most major languages, and obviously all the prominent languages of India as well. So we are grateful to Vyasa and his descendants for making this knowledge available to us so that we can have proper meaning and direction and purpose in our lives. And that is why all of us are indebted to the previous sages, to the previous spiritual masters, spiritual teachers. And today is the day that uh, is there to express our gratitude to all these various teachers who have helped us to understand this knowledge. So let us all pray to the lotus feet of the parampara and all those who have helped us. Because gratitude is a very, very important aspect of our culture. The more grateful we are for what we receive, the more is given to us. So this is a very important Vaishnava quality. The Vaishnava is never uh, forgetful of the grace that has been showered on him by whosoever. Uh, anyway, there is so much to say on this topic. Uh, I'll just mention one more thing. The Guru Purnima is also the day which is the appearance day of uh, Sanatan Goswami. Sanatan Goswami, who is the direct disciple of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, who founded uh, Madan Mohan Temple in Vrindavan. The Samadhi is located just next to it. Uh, one of the eternal associates of the Lord from the spiritual world. And the personality who was considered by all Brajvasis, even up to this day, as their guru. So, Sanatan Goswami is not just another guru. He is considered as the guru of all the residents of Brindavan. In fact, on today's day, the entire Braj community, the Brajvasis, do a whole parikrama of Brindavan, Brajmandal, 
or Vrindavan Dham at least, uh, in honor of Sanatan Goswami. So, obeisances to Sanatan Goswami also. It's also the Tiruba Mahotsavo of uh, Zolines uh, Bhakti Charu Maharaj, who left us last year uh, because of uh, COVID. So, we offer our obeisances to him as well. And uh, we also take this opportunity to pray for the good health and protection of all the devotees who are struggling with their health because of COVID or otherwise, so that uh, Krishna may keep them in good health and spirits, so that they can continue to render the wonderful, meaningful services that they are doing. And because of all these services and contribution of all these devotees, big and small, this beautiful environment has been created on this planet by which Krishna consciousness, Sanatan Dharma, has become so accessible for all of us. So we are all unknown to us, the austerities that others have performed. So many great souls have performed. We are enjoying the fruits of the wonderful efforts and the austerities of thousands and thousands of great souls. So let us always remain grateful to them and in that way we will receive the blessings and it is also our duty to, according to our capacity, add to that effort so that what we have received as a wonderful gift, we can help others around us, after us, to also have access to this knowledge and to also be able to understand this knowledge. So that is the spirit of Guru Purnima that Prabhupada would always say that the ultimate success of the Guru is to see that his disciples become Guru. So that is ultimately the success for every teacher. That Not that students always remain students, but the students eventually become teachers. Of course, the students never think themselves as equal to the teacher. They always... The teacher always remains the teacher. The guru always remains the guru. But it is the aspiration of all sincere, selfless teachers to see that others take up the similar mission and become instruments of compassion by reaching out to many others. Because there are 7 billion people on the planet and so much to share. So having said that, uh, we will come back to the topic of discussion today, which is chapter 29 of the third canto of Srimad Bhagavat. This chapter is entitled Explanation of Devotional Service by Lord Kapil. So our conversation between Mother Devahuti and her son, Lord Kapila, continues in this chapter. And Devahuti is prompting to go into depths of some aspects which she had already asked. There has been discussions on yoga, there has been discussions a little bit on devotional service. Devahuti says that, oh my dear Lord, you have already described so many wonderful things. You have described the Sankhya philosophy. But can you now Describe the path of bhakti very specifically. Because this path of bhakti is the very basis, the very root and the ultimate goal of all yogas. It's a very interesting comment Mother Dehauti makes. And we have been discussing this point very often. That at the end of the day, any yoga you take, if the yoga is not aiming or helping in connecting to the Lord ultimately, then that system cannot actually be called yoga. So an aspect of devotion has to be there in all forms of yoga. The goal always has to be the Lord. Only then it is yoga. But other forms of yoga are called by other names, such as Karma Yoga, Jnana Yoga, Ashtanga Yoga, only because 
at that stage because the yogi has not developed complete exclusive devotion he is still taking shelter of another process to elevate his consciousness but we have been discussing both in the bhagavat and in the gita that whatever benefits are available the last verse of the 8th chapter we were discussing on wednesday from the gita yadneshu daneshu tapasu chaiva whatever processes one follows yadnya dana tapa swadhyaya of the vedas the yogi the devotee who connects exclusively in devotion to the lord automatically attains the benefit of all other processes so bhakti is so key it is in fact the very foundation of yoga it is the goal of yoga and it is the one which nourishes the process of yoga no matter what the process is so please devahuti saying my dear lord please describe that and also describe to me in detail for my benefit as well as for the benefit of people in general this whole process of birth and death and how living entities are suffering not because we enjoy a pessimistic discussion but because when we hear about the calamities of material existence that acts as an impetus for living entities to become detached from the activities of this material world and start focusing on spiritual life so instead of waiting for everybody to go through hundreds of kicks of material nature and then at the end of the life realize oh i didn't achieve anything of significance instead of that if we listen to the words of scripture of the sadhus upfront since early in our life kaumaram acharet pragyo dharman bhagavatan ih when prahlad's friends told prahlad maharaj we are so young let us play why we should discuss bhagavat at the age of 5 prahla tells his friends no 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 once we are 5 we must start studying bhagavatam because bhagavatam is about how to live life you cannot read how to live life when you are just about to die isn't it the manual is for the purpose of properly utilizing human life so it must be read in the beginning just like we do not read a manual when we are about to throw a complicated device into trash 10 years after using it then what will happen we will open the manual and realize there were 100 features and we were using only two so that is what happens to the kripana the miser स्क्रिप्चर से यह इदम अक्षरम अविदित्वा अस्मान लोकान प्रयति सकृपण ही हू लीव दिस वर्ल्ड डाइज पास अवे विदाउट हैविंग अंडरस्टूड आत्मतत्व ही इज अ माइजर बिकॉज यू हैड सच अ वंडरफुल अपॉर्चुनिटी इन द फॉर्म ऑफ दिस मशीन which allows the expression of consciousness to a degree which allows spiritual advancement allows spiritual inquiry but those who waste this opportunity by simply living like cats and dogs they are called kripana ha misers so devahuti say please explain these so that people in general can understand what is the need to be detached from material activities because people are thinking all these material activities will make us happy but when you explain they may probably be able to understand that actually material activities are a cause of misery rather than happiness dukha yonaya evate so the answer to this specific question about material activities and their fruits is not being dealt with in this chapter in great detail is being discussed in the next chapter 
this chapter primarily lord kapila focuses on the first question explain the path of devotional service which is the ultimate end of all philosophical systems then there is one more question which devahuti asks please describe kal eternal time which is a representation of you my lord and under which whose influence entities in general are engaged in various pious activities so you can explain everything you are the supreme lord you are like the sun who dispels the darkness of the conditioned life krishna surya sama maya haya andhakar chetane charta mrit shah krishna taha nahi maya rudhi what is darkness 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 doesn't have its own independent existence darkness is simply the absence of light so where the light of knowledge is there where the light of krishna is there and in kali yuga how does the light of krishna shine the bhagavatam at the very beginning says the arka the sun of the bhagavat has risen on the horizon of kali yuga to give light to the living entities in this dark age krishna has appeared in the form of bhagavat so living entities who are suffering in this virtual world remaining in darkness without taking shelter of the lord and simply bound up in material activities without understanding that they are subjecting themselves to torture with a false hope that they will actually attain lasting happiness and who become tired in that endeavor when does a living entity become actually genuinely turns towards spiritual life most of the times a soul who is going through punarapi jananam punarapi maranam they turn towards krishna in the spiritual life only when after repeated attempts to enjoy 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 they work hard and hard and hard and only get suffering life after life the life and eventually they become so fatigued devahuti says that they realize that this is so frustrating i'm not getting what i want at that point at least if not earlier ideally earlier at that point they are looking for a solution so this knowledge is important and that is why it is so important that we spread this knowledge of the bhagavat across everywhere so that living entities especially human beings are given the opportunity to lead their life in the right way for the right goal so maitreya muni and vidura ji are discussing this whole conversation and maitreya muni says to vidura that when mother devahuti asks these questions the great says kapila kapila was became very compassionate he was very happy to hear the words and the questions of his mother devahuti she was very happy because in her questions what not just concerns about herself but concerns about the welfare of all living entities see this is the heart of a saintly person she knew that she has got such a wonderful exclusive opportunity to ask directly god himself god himself has become her son lord kapila is god himself how many of us will get the opportunity that in an environment like this one on one with god uh, you can ask questions and god will answer and god is the son she wanted to extend the benefit of the outcome to all living entities she was thinking of that that is why when she is asking she is saying explain in such a way that not just for me but for the benefit of all living entities for people in general they should also be under, able to understand because they all appear so fatigued being beaten by maya so when the lord sees this compassionate nature of the devotee 
that whenever the devotee gets any blessing, any extraordinary blessing, immediately the devotee wants to extend that opportunity to others. He doesn't think that, oh, I will just keep this to myself. Whether it's knowledge, whether it is prasad, whether it is some wonderful opportunity to serve, whatever it is. The devotee is always in the spirit, a true devotee is always in the spirit of trying to extend that grace to all those who can, whom he can reach out to so that everyone can take benefit. And in the spiritual sense, there is actually no reason to withhold other than envy. Because Krishna never becomes less accessible by sharing. Yes. In the material world, we don't want to share, right? If we share our wealth, what happens? If the wealth gets shared between two brothers, 50-50. If it gets shared between three brothers, 33%, 33%, 33%. 4%, 25% only. So the more we share material things, Even in terms of relationships, isn't it? Will a wife like to share the husband? Everybody wants the relationship exclusively. Even children sometimes, they don't want siblings because they want exclusive attention of their parents. But spiritual realm, the equation is very different. The more we share Krishna, because Krishna is unlimited, the more Krishna becomes available and accessible to us. Amazing, isn't it? The more we try to keep Krishna for ourselves, the more he disappears and runs away. And that is why the spirit of all the great souls is to share Krishna as much as possible. And that's why at the end of the Bhagavad Gita also the Lord says, Yaidam paramam guyam mad bhakte shobhidasati bhakti mai param kritva mame vaishyatya samshya Those who share this transcendental knowledge amongst my devotees, they are most dear to me and they will attain to me without doubt. So Lord Kapil is very happy with this mood of his mother and he says, oh noble lady I will explain to you please note that even for bhakti, because you've asked me this question about bhakti even for bhakti there are multifarious paths qualitatively multifarious paths within bhakti External process may be same, but still bhakti can be called in different qualities based on the quality of the executor. Now, this is a very interesting and important principle. So, we will discuss this a bit because it's very important for all of us to understand very clearly. Point is, even though we may say, I am practicing bhakti, Question is based on the qualities that we have. The bhakti that we practice also falls into certain qualitative categories. What are those categories of qualities? There is tamasic bhakti. There is rajasic bhakti. There is sattvic bhakti. And there is transcendental pure bhakti. Okay, I am repeating four categories. Which, which come through the next verses. I'm just mentioning it up front. Tamasic Bhakti, Rajasic Bhakti, Sattvic Bhakti and Nirgun or Transcendental Bhakti. So one by one, Lord Kapila starts explaining these kinds of Bhakti. Now, again, we will go through the verse and it will become more clear. Uh, because it is about qualitative aspects of understanding, mood, knowledge, uh, how one relates to the Lord and to the world and to others. All these aspects are important here. It is not so much here that the external rituals are different. So maybe, uh, we are around 31 families here now connected. Maybe each one of us Maybe 
practicing the bhakti in a different way. Maybe some of us may be practicing bhakti in Tamogun. Maybe some of us are practicing in Rajogun. Maybe some are doing in Sattve. And maybe a few are doing transcendental Nirguna Bhakti. And the characteristics of each of them also the Lord describes. So you can use those characteristics to match which characteristics you fit in. So let's see what the Lord says. He says, if bhakti is executed by a person who by nature is very envious, very proud, always angry, very violent, such a person who has this kind of a spirit and who is very self-centered, self-centered, the word the Bhagavatam uses the English equivalent is separatist. Prathak Drik, I think, something like that, the word is used in the verse. That who sees himself and the Lord, their purpose or their interest as separate, such a person, his bhakti is considered to be in the mode of ignorance, tamogona. Bhinnadrik. Bhinnadrik means he sees his own interest and the Lord's interest different. Now, this is a very important point. Because what is bhakti? The definition of bhakti has been given very beautifully by Shukri Goswami. Anya bhila shita shunyam jnana karma diyana vruttam anukulena krishnanu shilanam this is the Uttam Bhakti. This is the transcendental Bhakti. Nirguna Bhakti is same as Uttam Bhakti. This is the word Uttam means transcendental or Nirguna. Anukulena Krishna Anushilanam. Krishna Anushilanam means you make Krishna's purpose your purpose. You don't force Krishna to follow your purpose. This is the materialistic thinking. You force Krishna to follow force. Of course, nobody can force God. But you try to push your agenda on God. This is what I want, God. God is my order supplier. That mentality is considered either Tamoguni or Rajoguni Bhakti at best. So those who are envious and practicing bhakti. What does envious in bhakti mean? Envious in bhakti may mean that even though one is in bhakti, one is always trying to so egoistic and proud that he's always trying to show himself as very important. I am such a great devotee. I am such a wonderful devotee. Always trying to see how others are pushed behind, others are crushed, so that my power, my control, my glory as a great devotee, as a wonderful spiritual person, always remains prominent. So if one has this kind of a mentality, proud, envious, violent, angry, then is one's purpose same as the Lord's purpose? Not at all. So those who have such a separate interest and are very self-serving and self-serving in a very negative way because they are angry, they are offensive, they are critical, then such a person is said to be executing tamasi bhakti. So when we are in the association of devotees in general, we will see devotees of all categories. Again, we are not trying to be judges of anybody. But at the same time, we have to, without criticizing others or without being too judgmental, we have to still be a bit discriminating because it is very important, Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur especially says, that a devotee, a sadhaka should be careful even amongst devotees. He should associate with those who have good character. 
those devotees who do not have a good character one must be careful to not associate because if one is not pure then that impurity in that person may rub off on us that's why one should always aim to associate with those who are advanced of course the devotee respects all devotees no matter what their stage is anyone who comes to krishna sincerely accepting krishna as the supreme personality of godhead as the goal of their life even though they may be struggling even though they may be performing tamasi bhakti they still respect them yes the devotee because is chanting hare krishna he is a devotee because he has taken to the process of krishna consciousness but unfortunately he is still in this mentality offensive of others critical of others always judging others he is like this she is like that gossiping about people their enjoyment in life is rather than discussing bhagavatam and the greatness of the devotees and the lord they are continuously comment doing a commentary on the character of other devotees and they pretend that that is their seva so this is all very dangerous mentality those who try to enjoy the juice of gossip they are unable to taste the nectar of krishna consciousness so one should be careful so this is tamasi bhakti the rajasik bhakti is slightly higher but still a separatist mentality because rajasi is also about selfish interest so what is this rajasik bhakti those who worship the lord they still have and have a selfish interest what kind of selfish interest they worship the lord but they worship the lord with a desire for some benefit for themselves they may not be violent like the tamasic people but they are not worshiping the lord to serve him and please him they are not making the lord's interest as their own they are worshiping the lord because they want to pass their order list to the lord dhanam dehi balam dehi jayam dehi yasham dehi give me wealth give me fame remove problems this is this kind of mood is amongst the most common and there are many who take to bhakti with this kind of a motivation and many people who are not fixed up in devotion if they have this rajasik bhakti sometimes after they get what they wanted they say bye bye to krishna Yeah, I got my transaction is over. I am continuing with my materialistic way of life. So this kind of rajasik bhakti is also prithak bhava, which is very similar like bhinna drik of the previous verse. Essentially means the same. Separate is still there is a separate mentality. There is still selfishness, but it's slightly better because. at least it is not aimed at hurting others and being violent towards others but this is not the goal of devotion this kind of rajasik bhakti sees bhakti as a means to satisfy one's own selfish desires if you think deeply about this kind of an approach this kind of approach is actually not spiritual it is spiritual only in the sense that we are connecting to the supreme lord in that sense it is purifying but other than that there is no spiritual in the intention of approaching the lord so one must be careful that one doesn't get influenced by this kind of mentality then what is satriki bhakti Lord Kapila explains that when a devotee worships the Lord, and after he worships the Lord, whatever fruits of material of the fruits of the activities that he has performed, he gets. He uses the results of those activities for nirharam. Was nirharam to free himself? 
from the fruits from the uh, contamination of material activities his devotion is considered to be in the mode of goodness so in very simple words what does this mean karma nirharam uddishya parasmin va tad arpanam they offer to the lord they offer the fruits of the results to the lord in some way what is their motivation are they doing because they love the lord are they doing so that they are doing just like somebody who's earning money has to pay some tax to the government how many of us pay tax to the government with great love oh i just so much enjoy i have earned so much money let me offer this tax with love to the central government tax is a is perceived as a burden actually it is not it is perceived as a burden tax is important but it's perceived as a burden so here the tax is being given something like a tax where the results part or full of the results is being offered to the lord so that the contamination of the material activities is removed so that the person who has performed those activities he doesn't have to suffer can anyone give me an example of this kind of an activity anyone where one offers to the lord something so that he doesn't have to suffer certain reactions there are two very prominent examples no one hari krishna prabhu ji offering him tirupati undiyal yeah by specifically tirupati undiyal yeah any 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 undiyal. <laughs> any undiyal. yeah so when we offer uh, part of the fruits of our activities to the lord what does it do the charity purifies our wealth because when we all earn money even in the process of earning money there are so many faults and so many mistakes and it is said when one offers a part of the results of the fruits of these activities to the lord those karmas the negative aspects get purified and one doesn't have to suffer wealth becomes purified through dan not dan to anybody but dan to the supreme that is what the scriptures say not my opinion the opinion of the scriptures that wealth becomes purified through dan so that's why this karma arpanam principle as is mentioned here is very important so when dan is done of one's earning the wealth gets purified the food we eat bhunjate te tvagam papa ye pachanti atma karana ki si eat the food without offering for yajna to the lord one eats sin because there is violence even in cooking food yes vegetarian food is better than non vegetarian non vegetarian food because the violence is so much lower but nonetheless there is some violence there is still some fault so many living entities are microbes are hurt even as we burn the fire and cook the food so violence cannot be avoided it can only be minimized so how does one protect from the karmic consequences of food of anna by offering yajnyarthat karmano anyatra lokoyam karma vandan ha tadartham karma kaunte ya mukta sangam samachar and offers it to the lord so these are two very prominent principles and these are very important because these two are all pervasive we are all earning wealth as grahasthas and we are all cooking food so by donation to the lord and for his service wealth becomes purified and by offering food to the lord once food becomes purified but the important question is in that activity both these activities are good and nice question is what exactly was your motivation to offer to the lord if your motivation of offering donation 
was i want to purify my well nirharam i don't want the sin of the food that is being cooked so that's why i'm offering to god ah now i am free from the karma if that is the mentality then that kind of devotion is called devotion in the mode of goodness because still even though your objective is good is dutiful and right your motivation is still not about pleasing and serving the lord it is not selfish in the materialistic sense but it has not become truly selfless by doing it exclusively for the pleasure of the lord and that is why that activity even though better than bhakti in mode of darkness and bhakti in the mode of passion it is not yet transcendental it is still material because it is still has a selfish interest even though not a gross selfish interest not violent not a direct material benefit it is some kind of a sense of a desire to be free from suffering isn't it uh, there is a sense of uh, a desire of mukti within it oh i don't want to suffer the consequences of this activity how do i become purified by the consequences of material infection of these activities ah yes so the same activity can be performed same activity ya yeah, dana ha dana i i want to just take this example since we are on this point let's take the example of dan the bhakta in the mode of goodness gives the dana so that he becomes his money and whatever he is earning becomes purified the same dana from the wealth is given by the person by the devotee in the mode of passion with the mentality of same activity with the mentality of i am giving this to the lord oh lord i am expecting you give me 10 times back in return or this one thing or he is thinking by giving this i'll make sure that by my donation a big tile is put outside the temple mentioning my name and my donation and the announcement is made that so and so person did so and so donation and everybody glorifies me oh he is such a wonderful devotee who gives so much donation so there is a desire for some glorification there is desire for some material return and the person who is in the mode of ignorance he is giving even if he is giving donation he is thinking i want to give donation so that i am able to influence and control things because if i am a big donor i will have better control people will listen to me so that i can use my power and my control to subjugate all others and have my way the way i want this is a violent egoistic envious mentality i will give more than him so the devotees think that i am better than all others i will be glorified as the best devotee so this kind of a proud envious mentality then who is it that is a pure devotee yes the pure devotee may also give donation the pure devotee is not interested in any material consequences of giving that donation he is simply thinking how i am so grateful to the lord for all that he has given me all that the lord has given to me is his grace is actually all belongs to him actually it is all his ideally i should give everything to him but i have to keep some to maintain my body but let me give whatever i can and through that that wealth which actually belongs to him is going back to him for his service this is the mentality of the pure devotee and he is doing it exclusively for the lord's pleasure he is not interested 
whether he is glorified not glorified or any of the material side effects of that sale he is only thinking if krishna is pleased if guru is pleased if the vaishnavas are pleased irrespective of whether that pleasing becomes a public announcement or not he is not bothered as long as krishna guru and the vaishnavas are pleased that is all that matters so all duties that we have based on our varnashram situation as brahman kshatriya vaishya shudra or brahmachari grastha vanpasa sanyasis we all have our duties and from our duties there are fruits coming so the question is the fruits that we are offering to the lord are we offering them in the mode of goodness like is being described earlier or are we doing it exclusively for the pleasure of the lord svanushtitasya dharmasya samsiddhir haritoshanam that is what bhagavat says in the first canto the ultimate success of the performance of our material duties as per varna and ashram is to please the supreme personality of godhead lord hari so all these mixed modes one has to transcend there are nine processes of bhakti shravanam kirtanam vishnu smaranam pada sevanam archanam vandanam dasyam sakyam atmani vedanam each of these processes shravanam can be done in rajogun tamogun satvagun or in nirgun kirtan can be done in tamogun rajogun satvagun and pure kirtan smaran also archanam also vandanam dasyam so one has to be so careful and if you analyze what we have discussed a bit more carefully you will come to the conclusion that ultimately what is the characteristic that places our same external act of devotion into one of these four buckets is ultimately our motivation because the qualities of the modes of nature actually ultimately drive our motivation they determine our motivation so we have to be always as devotees i try to continuously introspect to see what my motivation is and it is a big struggle to keep the motivation pure we have to be very honest it's not easy at all because if we are still not transcendental and most of us are not then it's not easy we have to make an special effort to curb and keep in control our tamoguni mentalities our rajogun most of us are struggling on the tamo and rajo very few are even coming to the point of sattva to speak of nirgun so what is this nirgun bhakti uttam bhakti is being described in the 11th and 12th verse मदगुण श्रुति मात्रेण मयि सर्व सुहाशये मनोगतिर अविच्छिन्ना यथा गंगां भसोम बुधौ लक्षणं भक्ति योगस्य निर्गुणस्य हि उदारितम अहैतुकी अव्यवहिता या भक्ति पुरुषोत्तमे वेरी गुड वेरी नाइस व्हाट इज दिस उत्तम भक्ति व्हाट इज दिस अनअडल्टरेटेड भक्ति इज व्हेन one is avyavahita and ahaituki the nirguna bhakti bhakti yogasya nirgunasya is exhibited when it is causeless and uninterrupted the same definition as what this goswami has given ahaituki and apratihita without material motivation and without cessation continuously and without a separate motive avyavahita purusha uttame when that bhakti is directed towards the supreme personality of god who is residing in the heart of everyone what happens what is the chief characteristic of that bhakti 
that bhakti one can understand is unadulterated when one's mind rather than being attracted to all these other material selfish considerations is naturally attracted to hearing the transcendental name and qualities of the supreme lord when one becomes excited by hearing about krishna one is not thinking about what i will get from doing this one is just excited to see krishna's deity to hear about him to talk about him to chant to do kirtan the very acts of bhakti become a source of great joy naturally and the mind flows towards the lord just as ganga flows towards the ocean even if there are obstacles ganga will find the way when the heart is attracted towards the lord like that then one must understand that one has developed uttama bhakti that is the characteristic when one's motivation is no longer selfish and one is directly desirous of pleasing the supreme personality of godhead this is the symptom of bhakti which is free from the three gunas so what i'm going to do it is 10:30 so i'm going to stop here i intended to cover this much only today also good i am able to complete this chapter is around 44 or 45 verses so we have come at the right point in this chapter where we can take a pause so summarily we have discussed bhakti of four types first is the trigunamai bhakti bhakti which is in tamogun prajogun and sattvogun and bhakti which is transcendental in nature and in the subsequent few verses lord kapila goes into elaboration of this transcendental pure devotion and what is the mentality in detail of those who are pure devotees because that is what is important for us we must understand what is the thing so that we can understand whether we have this thinking or not and if we don't how we must make an effort to slowly align our thought processes according to the template of pure devotion that lord kapila is explaining okay thank you very much tantra shrimad bhagavatam ki jai any questions any comments i'll just open the floor hari krishna prabhu yes sudhir sudha prabhu prabhu especially now with this with this pandemic when pandemic most of the time when we what pray we will always ask the lord for for his blessing in terms of our health and other what do we will see the devotees and what people in general so so in this mode in this in this aspect of both there is it will more or less come come in the in the mode of passion is it prabhu so what was the first statement uh, what what kind of bhakti are you talking about no i am saying that in this current pandemic pandemic many a times when we we no, no, no. okay okay i understood okay when we pray for others Yes. so see ultimately okay so we have to go to the root of the motivation okay we have to go to the root of the motivation not just the external prayer yes okay for example for example right if you are praying to the lord for good health for us now uh, is that a material prayer or is it a spiritual prayer yes huh? so just because we are praying for good health doesn't by itself make it in the mode of passion goodness darkness or transcendental the question is why are we asking for what we are asking what is our deepest motivation behind it is it a motivation of violence do we want good health so that you know i can get up and go and smash my neighbor and all and uh, you know attack that other devotee who i hate do i want good health so i can go out and earn lot of money and or go and dance in the uh, pub or do i just want good health so i am free from suffering 
and that becomes mode of goodness or do i want good health for myself or for others a devotee so that they can continue their devotional service to the lord with full enthusiasm vigor so that they can or we can make spiritual advancement what is the driver that is important motivation intent is not just the external prayer so we are asking for good health with that spirit see because the the truth is that for us as sadhakas if we are not in good health because body is the instrument we need we are not transcendental we are not we are not on the transcendental platform that you can practice krishna consciousness when the body is rattled with pain and misery and disease you cannot so we need good health so if you are taking care of the body the health or we are making prayers for a sick person either ourselves or others with that motivation that that may that good health help that person to continue his her service to the lord then it becomes a spiritual prayer it doesn't remain a material prayer do you understand okay 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 prabhu yes clear thanks bro yeah so that we we pray to the lord for devotees health with that spirit in mind yes uh so same way right even for us sometimes if we are struggling with material issues the reality for us is if material issues are there then we are unable to focus ourselves on sadhana sometimes because we are so weak in our own mind so in that situation it is helpful be peaceful and settle those problems so that we can focus on devotional service for so we have to continuously ask ourselves when we ask the lord for something is it really going to help us to focus on the lord service and sometimes the lord doesn't give us what we ask for because the lord knows that if he gives us what we ask for even though we think it will help us to serve the lord better it won't because sometimes we think oh only if i become a millionaire i can serve the lord with full devotion sometimes we think like that oh only if i had this that i can if i had 10 million ringgits then i can exclusively devote myself to god service but the reality is for many and i don't want to speak for you but the reality for many you many any of you But the reality for many is that maybe after, for many of us, if we get that, we'll probably forget Krishna and get busy in material enjoyment. But if it is actually good for us and Krishna feels that yes, this is what is needed and this is what will help him, then Krishna may give us. So Krishna makes also that judgment based on what is good, and for us also it is important that we also pray with what is actually going to help us. the ultimate goal anything else any other questions okay so we will complete the chapter the next week hopefully krishna willing and uh, so please if you have not done so please pray uh to all your spiritual masters to our parampara to shila prabhupad to our shiksha diksha gurus to the great sages to shri vyas to sanatan goswami to express our gratitude so it's a wonderful day to receive the blessings uh, of the gurus and in that way uh their grace opens up the way for our spiritual advancement Thank you very much. Grantra Shrimad Bhagavatam ki, Jai Shri Prabhupad ki, Jai Sanatan Goswami Pad ki, Jai Hindu Bhakti Charu Maharaj ki, Jai Jaya Bhakti Vrind ki, Jai Jai Sanatri Mani. Hari Hari Bo. Thank you. Hare Krishna Prabhu. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna Prabhu. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna Prabhu. Thank you and thank you for guiding us to Prabhu Hari Bo. Hari Bol, Gangotri Mata Ji, please give your blessings. Thank you. Hare Krishna, Prabhu Ji. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna, Prabhu Ji. Thank you, Prabhu Ji. Thank you, Ashwin.
थैंक यू सची प्रेम माता जी आनंद सुंदरी माता जी थैंक यू ओके थैंक यू ऑल वेरी मच आई विल सी यू ऑन वेनेसडे नेक्स्ट वीक यू विल स्टार्ट नाइन्थ चैप्टर इट बी वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग इज वेरी स्वीट वेरी स्पेशल सो रिमेन ट्यून्ड इन एंड प्लीज कंटिन्यू रीडिंग द चैप्टर्स व्हाट एवर वी आर डिस्कसिंग इन आवर क्लासेस मेक श्योर यू रीड द भागवतम रीड द भगवत गीता एंड दिस इज व्हाट विल कनेक्ट अस सो व्हेन वी स्टडी एंड वी डिस्कस then we'll be able to assimilate it and then also we should practice practice means we should chant the holy names hare krishna hare krishna 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 hare 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 rama hare rama 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 hare hare so if you are not already doing that please do that every day at least a couple of rounds under net uh beads one round so at least do two rounds every day which easily all of you can do uh, if not more and in that way you will see that with regular study of bhagavatam and regular chanting of the holy name offering prasad you will see we can all make very rapid spiritual advancement and we can see that in the form of what was discussed today in the last verse that we discussed that spontaneously the mind will get start getting attracted when we hear the name form qualities and past times of the lord then we know we are making spiritual advancement then we are not approaching lord or hearing about him to get something out of it just hearing about it is so glorious it's so enlivening it's so attractive it's so beautiful and so this is how we can all see for ourselves that we are making progress in spiritual bhakti thank you hare krishna